In Ontario, the regulator of all the mortgage brokers is called FISRA, okay? FISRA keeps an eye on mortgage brokers, you got to provide reports, they do all the licensing, they make sure that things are done right, right people are getting in. Now, look, you know, we're regulated by these folks, and naturally, if you're regulated by, by somebody, you have lots of things you want to complain about. Oh, they're not fast enough here. Your license isn't produced this quickly. This isn't done fast enough. That's not done fast enough. This is, oh, look, they just added something to the reports I got to do. Oh, that's a lot. Hey, yes, but it's not onerous. It's not crazy. It's not. I, I, We've worked with regulators in other provinces, and uh, yeah, these guys aren't bad. I'm not saying who's bad, but you know who's bad out there. <laughs> you other provinces, you know. <laughs> anyway, FIS is a good, they're basically good people. They're at, their, at the heart of it. The people running it want to do the right thing, which is ultimately what you'd like to have from a regulator. Like, they're not arrogant. They're not overbearing. The people at the top are reasonable people who just want to see the industry do the right thing for consumers because they're a consumer protection agency. That's what they are. So what they've been thinking about a lot lately, <clears throat> I've talked to them. We talk once in a while. Um, they've been putting on some uh, seminars uh, and they're thinking about private mortgages. Suitability, suitability for uh, the mortgage for the people who are getting that mortgage is it the right mortgage for the people? But particularly in the private mortgage space, because that's what we got to get. We got to know this in Ontario. The private mortgage space, it's, this, is, this is a mortgage that's not from a bank, not from an NHA lender, not from a big financial institution, not any of those things. It's from a small company that are, are they're really just regulated by the stock market regulator and by FISRA, but they're giving you their mortgage, okay? And then there's even the most private of private mortgages. There's just people. There's just a name on a mortgage. Hey, uh, John Smith is lending Joe, Joe Blow a mortgage, and then it's, lawyers handle it, and it goes through. So this stuff needs to be regulated because... It's not like the oversight of a big bank. I mean, these big banks in Canada are some of the biggest corporations of the world. So, and they are very carefully scrutinized. But, so this is not that, this is private mortgages. And because it's become tougher and tougher to get mortgages from a bank, that's, a, that's another regulator, that's the bank regulator. They're called OSFI, the Office of Superintendent of Financial Institutions. And they have squeezed and squeezed the banks in Canada on mortgage underwriting to the point where Basically, you've got a super select borrower. You got people who, you know, there's people who could have got a mortgage 10 years ago, but since 2016, it's just getting tighter and tighter. And the people who could have got a mortgage 10 years ago can't get a mortgage from a bank now or from another um, kind of regulated um, lender. They got to go to these private lending to it's called Mix Mortgage Investment Corporations. They got to go there. So a little bit of blame on the banking regulator for making it super tight, but more and more people in Ontario regulated by FISRA need private mortgages. Okay. So they've just come up with some really, you know, good ideas about how this private mortgage thing should be approached. There are simple principles like, number one, have you checked everywhere else? Like as the mortgage broker who people come to with a problem, hey, my bank turned me down, what should I do? If the mortgage broker just jumps to, you need a private mortgage. Like, no, no, stupid, stupid, don't do that. Like there's other lenders. Maybe there's a credit union who'll do it. Maybe there's a, an alternative lender who's like a, a home trust or a uh, equitable bank will do it. I mean, they're, they're, you got to check with everybody. Maybe there's a maybe there's another way to get an actual bank to do it. Maybe you just didn't present it properly. You've got to exhaust all those possibilities for reasonable institutional lending before you ever think about a private mortgage. And by the way, thank you, Fizzer. That's the right approach. That's the way every goddamn mortgage broker should work. They should look at it as not just jump the private because I can make some extra money and it's easy. Like, let's do the hard work of checking. Okay, credit unions, everybody else, let's check around. There's all, is, there, is there a small bank who can do this? Like, what can we do? Okay, that's got to be done first. That's a good principle. The next thing is, hey, if we're doing this mortgage, can the... Can the borrower actually pay? Like, are we just doing a mortgage because, oh, there's a lot of equity in the home. Look, the home's worth a million dollars. They've got a, a $400,000 mortgage. They only want another hundred. That's half a million total. Place is worth a million. Very safe mortgage. 
ah, we don't have to care if they can pay. We just got to make some money, charge some brokerage fees. Our lender looks at it and says, private lender guy, he's maybe just a human being. He says, oh, yeah, oh, that's a great house. It's only like we're only lending to 50% of the value of the house. Yeah, I'll do it. I don't, I don't care. I, well, you don't care, okay? No, nah, if they don't pay, I'll just take it away. What? Okay. Like, is that, like, we, we got to know that the people can pay because that's been a complaint of the system that this private lending, hey, uh, yeah, if they if there's a, if it's safe enough for the lender, we don't care if they can pay. We don't care. Just give them the mortgage. Sayonara. We make a broker fee. Lender makes out. Maybe the lender sells the house, makes some money on the penalties and the fees. Lawyer takes care of it. Power of sale, foreclosure, whatever. But it's safe for the lender. Ah, we don't even know if the borrower can pay. That ain't right. That ain't right. If the borrower can't pay, you got to prepay the mortgage, which leads us to the third issue. Should there be a mortgage at all? Should we be doing a mortgage at all? Let, let alone like they can't pay, so we'll prepay it because they have a plan. The borrower has a plan. Listen, I just need this money. Fix up the kitchen. It's super dated. I gotta fix that up. I gotta clean up the yard, and then I'm gonna sell the house. And yeah, I am selling. I, and I'm put writing it. I'm putting it down. I'm putting it in writing. I'm gonna sell the house. Okay. So that's reasonable. There has to be a clear, rational strategy. There has to be sensible thinking behind what's going to happen. Or, hey, I've just got a new job. Things are going to be okay, but I just have to get back on my feet. I just need this money to get me through. Okay, let's check on the job. Yeah, it's real. So in other words, is it just not lending for the sake of making the lender money? Is there a rational hope that the borrower will be able to make the payments and will come out the other side, either sell the home in a, in a better, why don't they sell the home right now? Well, maybe there is some fixing up that needs to be done. Maybe there is some liens that need to be paid off. So we'll listen to that. But listen, hey, there's gotta be those three keys to making sure the customer's being traded right and don't just jump directly to a private mortgage. No, that's goddamn wrong. Don't do that.